Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Um, I'm really excited to be here with all of you tonight. So please don't go running for the door or ask for your money back um, tonight. The secret is out. Uh, I'm not really an expert, but most of the people I know who are in design leadership positions are not experts either. Um, not everyone will admit to this, but I think it's true. Um, the thing I think we do have in common as design leaders is that we've had a lot of really great opportunities. We've learned from a lot of really amazing people and mentors, and we love to optimize. Um, we love to change the things that don't work. So I want to ask everyone a question. Um, I want you to think about this a little bit for a minute. Um, what is a leader? Um, when you think about it, what do you see in your mind? Um, what is this person like? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Um, is there a certain ethnicity? Uh, is it someone who's outspoken or quiet? Someone with opinions or someone who asks a lot of questions? So kind of think about it a little bit and, and think about who you see. Um, I was thinking I would try to do some sort of like design exercise during this um, talk and have everyone draw that person. Um, but I think we probably all know we might to start see a little bit of a pattern um, or maybe just a bunch of caricatures of Johnny Ive or some other iconic design leaders. Um, so I wanted to um, look up what the definition of leader is in the dictionary. Um, <laughs> this is only one of the definitions, there are multiple. So Merriam-Webster says, um, the person as an employer or supervisor who tells people and especially workers what to do. Okay, interesting. Even better, this is the first synonym listed in the thesaurus. Um, <laughs> boss man, okay, all right. So not exactly what I think of when I think of a leader, but I think this means that a lot of people actually might think of this word when they think of leaders. Sad. <laughs> a little disappointing, right? Um, this is kind of the guy I think of when I see um, these definitions here. This is a guy who tells people what to do. Um, some people probably call him boss man. So I want to tell you not to worry. Um, I think you can still be a really great leader without telling people what to do. I think society will tell you otherwise. Um, it might say that you need to look a certain way, you need to act a certain way, um, you need to push people around a little bit. Um, but I'm telling you to ignore all of that um, and decide who you want to be as a leader because you get to decide. Um, so I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be this guy. So I'm not that guy, but who am I? I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, this is me <laughs> on a bay cruise in San Francisco Bay. I highly recommend it as a team building exercise. Just don't push each other over the edge. Um, this is a photo we snapped um, with my team. They still trust me to lead the team even after this photo. Um, but my story actually starts about 15 years ago, which sounds like forever to me. Um, when I was given the opportunity um, to be a leader at a really young age, I worked at a small um, digital nonprofit called DoSomething.org. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not. Um, I had just graduated from college, and I had become the editor-in-chief of our teen service magazine. Um, so in a previous life, I had an English degree, um, did a lot of writing and reading and all that wonderful stuff. Um, in this job, I got to do fun things like hang out with Jimmy Fallon and interview Rihanna and um, all these wild, exciting experiences. Um, but I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I was in way over my head. I had no clue how to be a leader, how to think strategically, how to design an experience um, for these teens. I didn't know what an editor-in-chief was supposed to do. But I watched and I listened. Um, I cried a shit ton. <laughs> I struggled, I learned. Um, 
I had never really done something this challenging in my life before. Um, the mantra in my house was not really that I could do anything or be anything. Um, so I didn't really know what was possible. Uh, this time in my life was incredibly valuable to me. And little by little, I started to trust myself a bit more um, and think about the leader that I could be. Sadly, I left to do something before Justin Bieber made an appearance at our awards show on VH1. Missed opportunities. Um, so that was where I started, and this is where I am now. I lead the ThoughtWorks products design team. Um, ThoughtWorks products is a division of ThoughtWorks, which is a professional services firm specializing in agile and custom software development. Um, right now, I manage a very small team of four designers, um, some in San Francisco, some in Bangalore. And the four of us do all of the marketing design, all of the product design, and all the de design research for the three product products that you see up here, which we build for um, software development teams. We have Go, which is our continuous delivery tool, Mingle is our project management tool, and Gage is our automated testing tool. So let's talk a little bit about managing. Um, don't look it up, it's not a real word. <laughs> I made it up. Um, I'm a boss man, I can do that. <laughs> um, so just like a quick show of hands, uh, who thinks management is more important in creating a high functioning team of designers? Anybody think management is the most important thing? Maybe, a couple people, okay. Um, who thinks leadership is more important in creating that amazing design team that creates amazing products. So you probably see what I'm getting at here. It's a trick question. Um, I think they're both equally important. Uh, although management often gets a bad rap. Uh, it sounds boring. It's not sexy. It's not interesting. So I want to talk a little bit about what leadership is to me and what management is. Um, leadership to me is the painting. Management is the brush technique. Um, leadership, I don't usually like to use acronyms. Do, does everyone know BHAG? Big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, so leadership is thinking of the BHAGs, the big, hairy, audacious goals. Management is thinking of the roadmaps that take you there. Uh, leadership is thinking in systems. Management is thinking of the connections between those systems. Leadership is defying expectations. Management is setting expectations. So uh, I strongly believe that you need both. Uh, you need to manage. I'll try not to use that too much. Um, so at work, these are the three primary hats that I wear. There are probably a bunch more, but you can't fit them into a nice Venn diagram. Um, so. I have a little example of these hats and, and how, how I think about them. Um, sometimes I really want to solve a design problem myself. Um, I really feel like I have the best possible solution for this problem. I want to sit at my desk, put my headphones on, and just create. But I don't often have the time to do this. And so I have to often put my manager hat on and ask myself, will I be a blocker um, for this story? Will it take a lot longer than it should? And can someone, on, someone else on my team um, actually do this and accomplish a lot? So I think the trick is really knowing when to choose which hat. And when you get really good, you can combine some of these hats, maybe even all three at once. But um, that's level two leadership, and I haven't quite mastered that yet. So, um, so I've learned a lot along my leadership journey. And I'd like to share some of these things with all of you. So I think the first thing you need to think about as a design leader is how to improve yourself. Um, as with any good therapy session, you need to work on yourself first. Um, think about yourself as a leader and what you can bring to the team. Um, some of you may know the phrase servant leader. Does, does that resonate? Do people know what that is? So a uh, servant leader is a person who kind of shares power 
who puts the needs of others first and helps people develop um, and helps them perform basically as highly as possible. So I really try to be this kind of leader. But on top of that, um, I like to think of myself as a learner leader. So this is someone who is continuously learning and experimenting. Um, someone who can and will learn from the designers on my team. Um, I don't know it all. Every month or so, my team has a skill sharing workshop um, or will create a skill sharing video. Um, these are great like interactive sessions where we all sit together and someone teaches a new skill and we all learn. Um, the last one my teammate hosted, uh, we actually sent to our marketing team and now they are able to do a little bit of design work um, uh, on their own, which is great. So, of course, you really want your team to succeed, um, but the truth is that we learn a lot when we fail. Uh, let your team struggle a little bit, but offer your guidance whenever you can. Empower them to feel like they have ownership over things and that they can make their own decisions. It's really your job as a leader to cushion their fall and not to prevent their fall. Um, also share with them your failures. I think the important part here is that you just talk openly about failures, how to prevent the same thing from happening again and again. Um, creating a culture of safety around these discussions I think can go a really long way. Uh, <laughs> So everybody probably knows someone like this. Um, managing a team, I don't think it needs to be synonymous with controlling a team. I think creative people work best without you breathing down their necks. Um, you can offer support, feedback, attention, um, but pull back a little bit and give them some space. Um, I think creatives work best without constant constraints but rather with more intentional constraints. So a little example of this is that we're right now in the process of creating a new style guide for one of our products, which is, it's definitely in need uh, of one of these. Um, I put a few constraints on this process, this creation process. So the constraints were, we need to collaborate on this, um, we need to share knowledge, um, we need to start at, at square one with the current inventory of styles and what we're working with. Uh, we need to play around with digital color tools and think a lot about accessibility, which um, previous teams have not thought of. But then I let go. I'm not going to ask every day about progress, and I'm going to give everyone a little bit of room to breathe and to work. So <laughs> this is not, this is, uh, not a typo. Um, I'm practicing saying I don't know sometimes. Um, I think everyone should practice this. I don't think anybody expects you to have all the answers, even if you feel like you need to have all the answers. Um, I started my career as an experienced design consultant, and it was really terrifying for me to say the words I don't know, because you're uh, on a client site, and they expect you to know things and you're the expert there. Um, but I soon realized that my clients really appreciated honesty and the willingness to go and search out an answer um, more than my ability to fill the space with like half-baked ideas. Um, so start with yourself, for sure. Um, and then think about how you can improve your team. So we often tell our teams to be really empathetic and to have empathy for our users, but we rarely apply that to our own selves and teammates. I think if we can start to understand our teammates better, we can design a better daily work experience for them. So I would encourage all of you to learn about your people as individuals, care more about them, uh, learn about their uniqueness, um, and share your story with them as well. Um, my team had a design team building workshop not too long ago where we all took Myers-Briggs, StrengthsFinder, a bunch of the personality tests. Um, some people don't like these, but 
Um, what they did is they gave us a place to start to talk about um, how to understand each other on a deeper level based on our individual personality traits and how we could work better as a team knowing that stuff about each other. I definitely believe that um, self-reflection and team reflection is a critical path to improvement. Um, the discussion we had opened up some sensitive topics, but it really taught us a lot about how each of us behaves in certain ways um, and how we can work best together. So <laughs> talk openly about professional development um, and even your designers moving on to do bigger and better or different things. Um, ask yourself pretty often if your designers are happy. Ask them if they're happy. What could make them happier? Um, create opportunities that can enrich them as creative people. But also you need to realize at some point that they might stop feeling enriched in your environment. Um, encourage them to talk about this. Help them understand where to go next. Be a mentor and offer support. Um, don't make them worried about um, bringing up this conversation with you. Uh, this one I can't stress enough, and I feel like everybody says it all the time. I really do mean it. <laughs> um, I think your manager should be receptive to feedback, even if they're not always asking for it. If they're not receptive, I don't believe that they're a strong manager um, or leader. Uh, as a design leader, I think you want to make sure that feedback can flow freely, but that it's well structured um, and not a personal attack, and that you and your designers can be receptive to that feedback. It's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. Um, I think these things can sometimes touch on personal notes and people feel criticized. But eventually, I think you learn to trust that everyone has the right intentions coming at it. and. Um, I also believe that feedback also needs to be done in person um, as frequently as possible and not over email. I think written communication, there's a lot that's lost in written communication. Um, another thing my team does is team retros, retrospectives. Um, Jenny will be talking more about this later. Um, but we talk about process, we talk about outputs, communication, we talk about a lot. Um, and we figure out how we can try to make things better. We each take action items away from those retros and we report back to the group often on progress um, on those items. Uh, so <laughs> everyone is accountable. I'm, out, I'm ultimately accountable for the results of the work that my team does, um, but everyone is given the opportunity to own something big and work on it. Um, we hold each other accountable when someone isn't doing what's best for the team. Um, everyone on the team gets freedom, but everyone on the team is accountable. So <laughs> I'm going to sound like a grandma a little bit now, but um, your presence is the best present. I, I think this is true. Um, my team works really closely with other teams, specifically uh, in my work, it's the marketing team and the development team. Um, both of these teams know they can pair with us anytime. We really work hard on balancing heads down work with ensuring that we're accessible to these other teams. Uh, we don't hide in corners. We also include these teams on our design journeys, so we often have developers in on our research interviews, and we have uh, marketing team members in on design workshops pretty frequently. So these are just a handful of tricks I've learned along the way. Um, the most important thing I've learned, though, is just that I need to be myself. Um, I don't think you can really lead a team without um, authenticity. So ultimately, it's up to you to decide what kind of leader you want to be, um, how to get there, and uh, don't let the dictionary definition get you down. Thanks.